this Monday, Thursday service at Hilden United Church, part of the Clifton Pastor Charge. Today is not an upbeat service because Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday and Holy Week are not upbeat days. So a lot of our music today will be a little on the mournful side. This will be a reflective service. I'm probably going to talk a little bit about remembering Jesus. We're going to have two or three pieces of music and, uh, and a prayer of confession. And then the service was going to kind of end seemingly unfinished because this is like act two of a four-act play. Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter. And we hope that this service is meaningful for you. I want to begin today by reading the first part of the story from the Gospel of Mark for that Last Supper, that Monday, Thursday, and the betrayal of Jesus by Judas. Mark 14, verses 10 through 25. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this, and they promised to give him money. So he watched out for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house that he enters, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room that I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and all ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples left, they went into the city, and they found things just as Jesus had told them. And so they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. And while they were reclining at the table eating, he said to them, Truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me one who is eating here with me. And they were deeply saddened by this. And one of them went one by one. They said to him, surely you don't mean me. And he said, it is one of the twelve, one of one who dips bread in the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him that he hadn't been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I won't drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. Our first hymn is Bitter Was the Night. Bitter was the night.
that were anti-Roman and saw the tax collectors as collaborators with the Romans. And yet Jesus saw some hope that they could be turned around and changed. And so maybe these tax collectors remembered that their fear of the Romans and their desire for gain wasn't worth the cost of community that Jesus had enfolded and them back into. Right? So maybe that's what they did when they heard the words, remember me. And then there were the fishermen. Those fishermen that Jesus called right near the beginning of his ministry, and he called them away from their nets, and he said, come and I'll make you fishers of people. I will I'll help you. I, I want to inspire you about the kingdom of God. It's coming, it's here, it's upon you, it's near. You know, come. And so he gave them hope and purpose and meaning in their lives, even if they didn't quite understand what he meant by the kingdom of God and had a different idea. At least they remembered that excitement that they felt. And of course, that too was a challenge to the kingdom of Rome, the empire of Rome. And then all of them would recall how Jesus would have stood up to them against the Sadducees and the chief priests, how he trashed the temple, how he outwitted the scribes and the Pharisees every time they tried to catch him in something that would get him in trouble with the Romans. Should you pay taxes or not? Well, I don't know. Give to Caesar what's Caesar, and give to God what's God's. And by the way, everything belongs to God. Yeah. Uh, you may remember that Jesus called Herod a fox and you know, questioned about whether you should even pay these taxes or not. Especially the ones to the temple that impoverished the poor widows who gave their last cent, you know, and didn't even have enough to live on. And then there were the women, the women that probably created the meal uh, for that last Passover meal, and were there but are not mentioned. Mary and Martha and the others, then you remember that Jesus treated them like a real human being, that Jesus talked religion to them when nobody else would, that Jesus touched them and allowed them to touch him, that he ate with them. He didn't see them as unclean and dirty the way so many did. But even those loving, respectful attitudes and actions also got Jesus in trouble with the powers that be. He was violating social structure lines, right? He challenged everything. There are but a few things, these are but a few things that those first disciples would have remembered when they recalled the life of Jesus and later his death and resurrection. So tonight on this Monday, Thursday, I want to challenge those who are listening tonight to think about what they remember about Jesus. You know, the Apostle Creed basically says, was, you know, was born of a Virgin Mary and was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Doesn't even mention his whole life and what it was about him and the things that led to that crucifixion. Think about some of those things in the story of Jesus and how you might relate to them and how Jesus is good news for you when you remember him this night and every time you eat the bread and drink the cup. Has Christ given you vision and hope? Which part of his story do you relate to at this particular leg of your life and faith journey? So take just a few minutes to think about what you remember about Jesus. Continuing on with the story. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I'll go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, even if, every, if, if all fall away, I won't. 
Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you will have denied me three times and disowned me. But Peter said emphatically, no, even if I have to die with you, I'll never disown you. And all the others said the same, yeah, yeah, all the others said the same. So they went to a place called Gethsemane, a garden. And Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be in deep distress and trouble. And he said this, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He said to them, stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it was possible, that the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and he found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Could you keep watch for just one hour? Watch and pray so that you won't fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and he prayed the same thing. And when he came back, he found them sleeping again because their eyes were just so heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning a third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and, and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look. The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let's go. Here comes my betrayer. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs sent by the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss, that is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and then he kissed him. And then the men seized Jesus and arrested him. One of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, and he cut off his ear. Jesus said, Am I leading a rebellion that you've come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you didn't arrest me there. The scriptures must be fulfilled. And then everyone deserted him and fled. Through the reading of these scriptures, may you hear the word of God. <laughs>
of prayer now of confession. Let us pray. And there will be interspersed in the prayer, there will be verses of the hymn God Weeps, and there will be times of silence for your own individual confession. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, like your first disciples, we have been loud in our protestations of loyalty to you, and yet we too have betrayed you. You trod the way of sacrificial love without flinching. We hesitated to travel it at all. We've been afraid of the pain and suffering that love can bring. But it has done us no good to follow the broad and easier way, for it has made us less than the men and women we were designed to be. We have gained the world, but lost our own soul. So, we must recommit to following your way, the way of the kingdom of God, the way of the cross, even though it is hard, for it is the way of true life. In silence now, like the individual silences of scattered disciples on that first Monday Thursday, we confess our sin as individuals and as a church to you. to be untrue to you 
and our calling as Christ's disciples. Savior. 